So in my head, I was like, okay, I'm gonna accept Christ in front of everybody right now. Then I'm gonna go home and snort drugs until I don't wanna do them anymore. And that was my way of thinking. So I received Christ at the church. I went home, neglected my daughter and put her in front of the TV. I remember I grabbed a $100 bill. I always used a $100 bill for some reason, pride or something. I chopped up my crystal meth, got it all smooth and powdery, and I snorted a big old line. And I held the bill and I looked up and I said, Jesus, if you're real like that pastor said, then you gotta take these drugs from me. Come into my life, come into my heart. And I just got quiet. I said, search me right now, search my heart. And I stayed silent. And I said, you know I wanna quit. You know I wanna be a good dad for this kid. She lost her mother to drugs and she's gonna lose me if I don't quit. Amen. There's a high when you go on stage and you see all these people like just loving your music and loving you and stuff. And there's these girls and all these people going <sighs> worshiping me. When you see all those people just going nuts for you, it's like, you know, it, it puffs you up inside. You're like, you know, I'm important. That's where drugs can creep in and, you know, cocaine or whatever. Methamphetamines crept in and it all came from after drinking for me and, and my friends. And uh, it seems like fun in the beginning. It's a lie because it, it, it turns around on you. It starts to wear on your personality. It starts to wear on your relationships. And everything is affected by it negatively. Everything. There was a, a few times where life seemed good. My daughter, Jenea, she came into the world and I was like, it was just such a, a euphoric feeling. I thought my life could just feel like that forever, you know? It was like a, it was spiritual, just, I didn't know what was happening. I just felt so much love just fill my emotions. And I thought I was gonna be happy, but, uh. I just couldn't, I couldn't stay sober. I didn't know how. I hit rock bottom. I had swore that I would never do methamphetamines again because I saw what it did to my child's mother. It, it just took her feelings away and made her leave her kid. I just wanted her dead. I wanted to kill her. I, I thought she was a scum of the earth and uh, you know, how could she do drugs like that and let it, let the drugs win her like that? So I never was going to do meth again. I ended up with a everyday very, very crippling very addiction very to methamphetamine and everything that I said about my ex-wife came true for me. I sunk to the lowest gutter I could ever think of. I would spend time with my kid and I'd still be on it because I needed it to function. I'd get up in the morning, have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and snort meth and then take her to school or whatever. It was just, I it was a junkie. I started losing my mind. This guy would show up at my house with like a gun and stuff. And then I ran out in Europe, had my drug dealer just crazy. send me drugs through, through the mail. I'd be tweaked out in my hotel room watching this package come from the US. It was just nuts. My life just was like spinning out of control. Well, Janae had come out on, a, on one of the tours in the US. I just remember me. her skipping around the house just singing one of our corn songs called Adidas. All day I dream about sex. And I'm like going, what am I doing? I'm a junkie. My daughter's singing all day I dream about sex. And uh, I'm gonna die. Father? My uh, real estate broker, Eric, he, uh, he said, Brian, I don't mean to be weird with you. I, I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but I, f I felt the scripture like jump out at me. I've never done this before, you know, so I don't really know how to do this, but I felt like this would mean something to you. It's Matthew 11:28. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I remember all tweaked out. I looked up in the dictionary, wary. I looked up burdened, and I just 
I pulled the scripture apart and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm weary and burdened and I need rest for my soul. And uh, I didn't know if it was real, but, you know, they invited me to church a couple, couple weeks later and I had received Christ at the church. I went home, neglected my daughter, got it all smooth and powdery. Jesus, you got to take these drugs from me. Search me right now. Search my heart. Father. I felt so much fatherly love from, from heaven. And it was like, I don't condemn you. I love you. I love you. It was just love, love. And instantly, that love from God came into me. It was so powerful that the next day I threw away all my drugs and uh, I quit corn. I was like, I'm quitting corn and I'm gonna raise my kid because my kid, like I got the love from God coming to me and then it came out of me to my kid. It changed me, my heart was changed like that. And I was like, Janaya, daddy's gonna be home with you all the time. I'm quitting my career. And her face lit up and she's like, for me, you know, she felt so special, and uh, God used her to save me, to save her life later on. My dream came true way more than I dreamt about. I, got, I made more money, I played bigger shows, I mean, houses, cars, I tried drugs, I tried sex, I tried everything to try to get pleasure out of this life and I thought that I could fulfill my life with all this stuff by, by having my dream come true and it came true but it didn't fulfill it when Christ came in that feeling he gives you the gift of understanding life which is everything was created for Christ and by him and we we're created to be with him and it's the most incredible feeling because you're where you belong. And contentment is given to you in life because you don't have to look anywhere else. And you're exactly where you need to be. And the question about life is answered. I'm Brian Head Welch, and I'm second. <laughs>